the dice stay high. So let me shoot the seven with every shot. Viva Las Vegas. Viva Las Vegas. Viva Las Vegas. I'm going to give it everything I've got. Lady Love, please let the... Welcome to Vegas Talk Radio. The internet radio show about the news, people, entertainment, opportunities, and events in the best resort and vacation destination and fastest growing city in America, Las Vegas, Nevada. If it's worth your time and money, you'll hear about it here. And now, here's your host, Charlie Bass. Today's show, we have we have a young man who comes to Las Vegas quite often to sing, and actually he sings all over the world, and he's been doing it for a long time, and has more hits uh, on his arm than you could imagine, and he has done everything in the world you can you can possibly imagine as far as singing is concerned, and he's the nicest guy you ever want to meet. His name is Tony Butella, and he's better known as the lead singer and the founder of The Letterman. Tony, how are you doing today? I'm doing just fine, Joe. Wow, what an intro. Hey, what a guy. Uh, thank you so much for, for the wonderful intro, and that's really uh, always good to talk to you, Charlie. Yeah, but Tony, how did you get started? I got to start with that. I mean, well, you know, it's a, a, a funny story. Uh, uh, I was number eight of eleven children in Sharon, Pennsylvania. My mom and dad. Uh, my mother was the organist in a Croatian a Catholic church then, Sharon. And my dad, when he found out how good looking the organist was, he joined the <laughs> choir. <laughs> and he was a singer. And uh, they, uh, my mother was one of sixteen children, and my dad was one of eight. So when they got together and decided to get married when she was 17, he was 20, uh, they said, well, how many kids should we have? And uh, my mother said, well, how about 12? It's in between. <laughs> and they never got to 12. They had 11 of us. But my, in Sharon, Pennsylvania, being a small steel town in western Pennsylvania, my mother would take her boys, there was four of us in a row, to on Saturdays to see all the Gene Autry and Hopalong Cassidy uh, trigger flicks and right. cowboy movies. And uh, So we'd come out of the movies after being there four or five hours seeing four or five flicks of these cowboy shows. Uh, as we were walking home, she'd be astounded, as were my brothers, that I would know every song that I heard that in the movies, and I'd be singing them note for note. <laughs> and their, their mouths would drop, they'd wave in. I couldn't add two and two together, but I sure could remember song lyrics. So uh, uh, that, this was when I was like four or five years old. So uh, evidently, I had what they would call now attention deficit, or what the kids <laughs> now that put it with Ritalin. That's but, right. Uh, we, I was just uh, in the trees. You know, we, we were kids, we were poor family. We'd, we didn't have two nickels to rub together, so we made our own entertainment back in the, you know, in the 40s then. Right. And so uh, uh, we'd climb trees and make Tarzan. We'd make uh, rafts on the river that was half a block away, and like Tom Sawyer, Huckleberry Finn. We were so silly. We'd see how far, how close we'd get to the waterfalls <laughs> in our homemade rafts before it would take us over. But anyway, it was, that was the kind of life we had. And uh, so we'd sing around the family table uh, to, because there was no television in those days and we only had one radio. And uh, uh, so I was the singer of the group, though we all sang. And um, I, I, they, my mother, at first grade, the teacher said, we can't keep his attention. He's got too much energy. So uh, my mother's friend, her daughter was in our class and they enrolled her in tap dancing school so my mother thought it would be a good idea if I could go to dancing school a couple times a week it would extend some of this energy so I did ballet and tap and acrobats and adagio and so uh, since I was the only boy in a class of 30 girls in those days you know boys didn't take dancing that no. was kind of silly so but it gave me a lot of uh, limberness and a lot of uh, 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 you know adeptness on my feet uh, since I was the only boy the recitals that had to show the mommies and daddies what their uh, ten cents a lesson was going for in those days. So they had these recitals at the high school 
auditorium after the kids would get out of school in the summertime. So uh, I was the only boy in a class of 30 girls, so the teacher made me the singer, uh, little Johnny Jump Up, in my first review. <laughs> and I did such a good job. I brought down the house, uh, probably about 600 people, 700 people, but probably most of them were my relatives. <laughs> That's brought the house down. I had to do the number three or four times. Well, the next year, I did more than one song. I did two or three, and next year, so forth and so on. So when I was seven years old, after that recital, people started calling my mother up, well, six years old, and the Knights of Columbus, the Elks, and the Moose, and the Eagles, to sing for the dinner parties and their Christmas shows and Thanksgiving feasts. Well, uh, I had a piano player, Tony Arab. We'd pay him five bucks. And for some reason, these people would well, couldn't pay a kid. They'd pay me in cufflinks right. or a watermelon or something. And after about a year of that, my mother said, well, you're the only seven-year-old kid we know that has 35 sets of cufflinks in his drawer. So let's start charging. So at seven years old, I became a professional singer. Well, that's what I did. I became Sharon Pennsylvania's own Al Jolson, and I, I got a radio show, and I was doing pretty well uh, until I was about 10 years old. My mother had a cousin who had gone to California because the steel industry was failing in Sharon, and her cousin went to L.A. and got a job with an oil company out there, and he was put out on a rig for two months, and she had five kids under 12 years of age, and my mother was a super mom. She's the one that could do the ditches and change the babies all at the same time. Wow. So her cousin called her out there. She said, Mary, I have pneumonia, and my husband's not here, and I have to get these kids ready for school. Can you come out here and help me get back on my feet? And so my mother asked my dad and said, sure. So my dad said, when you're out there, why don't you take Anthony with you? Because maybe he's out there, he can do an audition and uh, maybe do something with his talents. So my mother, we got permission from Father Murphy to take me out of school for two weeks. And I went out with my mother on the train, two, three days and two nights on the El Capitan to L.A. When I was out there, it just so happened that uh, Bob Mitchell and the Mitchell Boys Choir, like he did every year, he put out pamphlets to all the schools uh, searching for young singers because every year kids get older and their voices change. Right. And he's got to keep refurbishing his boys' choir. So it just so happened when I was out there, there was a notice from Bob Mitchell, a flyer. <clears throat> so my cousin said, well, let's go up to Hollywood, Mom. I want to audition to be one of the Mitchell boys' choir. Now, that was a famous choir that's been in motion picture industry since the 30s at that time. They were in On Moonlight. They were in uh, Going My Way with Bing Crosby. They were in The Jolson Story, The Jazz Singer, Angels with Dirty Faces with uh, Edward G. Robinson. They were in Pale Face with Bob Hope. So the, the Bob Mitchell Boys Choir was, uh, the, even 20th Century Fox did a short subject on calling 40 Boys in a Song. Wow. So anybody would want to be in the Mitchell Boys Choir, so he'd have hundreds of auditions every week. So uh, our friends drove us uh, up to Hollywood since I was touting along, since I was visiting from California, and my how does Bob Mitchell know whether you can sing or not? Well, a kid would sing uh, Star Spangled Banner, or Bob Mitchell would say, sing Happy Birthday. Mm -hmm. Well, my cousin Bobby would sing, Happy Birthday to you, Happy Birthday, uh, uh, next. Yeah. And he said, my cousin's here from Pennsylvania, and Bob Mitchell said to me, what can you do? I said, well, here are my charts. <laughs> so he, he played my charts. I proceeded to do 20 minutes, and <clears throat> the next afternoon, the dreaded good news, bad news telegram comes. <laughs> You're now a resident of California, right? <laughs> no. Yeah, my mother it says, your son Anthony has been accepted into the Mitchell Boys Choir. My mother says, oh, my gosh. And the bad news was, your son Anthony has been accepted in the Mitchell Boys Choir. Well, here's, Charlie, here's the crux of my life. We call my dad, and uh, he's with the other 10 kids in Pennsylvania. My mother says, John, I guess your prediction came true. Your son has just been accepted in the Mitchell Boys Choir. What should we do? I can't leave him out here. i got to come back to my family. My dad says, put Anthony on the phone with me. My dad says, Anthony, what do you want to do? I said, Dad, I'd like to try it. So my mother, a few days later, gets on the train all by herself, crying every mile of the way back to Pennsylvania. Bob Mitchell had his own choir school, his own tutors, his own, own uh, boarding house. So there I was for a year by myself uh, in the Mitchell Boys Choir, working my head off, singing in 28 languages, learning new songs. Uh, I was, it, life went real fast. Within four days from the time my mother left, I was on the soundstage of Warner Brothers doing On Moonlight Bay with Doris Day and Gordon McRae. Wow. And then my, I was doing so well, uh, I did the White Christmas with Bing Crosby, Rosemary Cl